Thank Yo, you so bad, much, bro. I'm terrible at this Instagram live. This is probably my first one ever. So that was like, a, I felt like I was on Versus, like trying to figure out how to go live with these guys or something. It was pretty funny there. Sorry, my bad. Apologies. No worries, man. It, it's a little it's a little funny sometimes, but you know, you're here now. So I just want to say thank you. Appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to, to join us here today. Come on, bro. It's the least I can do. Like to bring some attention and awareness to what you're building over there with this cause is incredible. And nothing makes me happier than to do this, so. Yo, man, I honestly, I really appreciate that, bro. We're living in a real historic time right now, you know, and uh, I feel like it's, there's a huge shift happening. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of it, you know, and, and I'm also uh, honored to be able to support the families, you know, all those suffering right now. Uh, and that's what the campaign is all about, you know, justice for indigenous. And so when you said that you're, you, you, uh, uh, bro, when you first purchased our clothing, man, like maybe I'll take it back a bit. I was like, <laughs> bro, I was like, what? Um, <laughs> You know, because like literally, you know, all the all the albums you produce, man, I listen to like each one, you know, the ones that, you know, 2009 shit. It just like takes me back every year of like to my teenage years, bro. So I'm like uh, jamming last night and I'm like, humble, oh, humble, brother. This is crazy, bro. So um, I'm still I'm taking it in, man. I'm a little like, you know, taken back because you're one of the biggest producers in the world, bro. Like you got like three top hits on the Billboard 100 right now. We're going. I, 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 I like... just I just mix them. I just do the technical stuff. I, I'm the technical guy, so you know I, I only take credit where it's due for me. But look, you have to understand this is it's a like you said it's a crazy time we're in right now, and there's a lot of stuff happening. It was like I'll give you an example. I was on the only probably the only other live I de did or have ever done was uh, with Jagmeet Singh. And I, I, I went live with him and it was funny, like before I was talking to him about what we we're going to talk about. And like, you know, I kept talking to him about like, yo, you know, about how I'm like, so against white supremacy is like a real issue in, in the world that we live in. And it was so funny because I could, in that moment, it was just a very, uh, it was a very interesting thing for me to be saying right but like flash forward six months later it's like that conversation is everywhere right yeah. and so i'm just so happy that that conversation is everywhere because now i can just openly have it without being extremely radical to the people that i'm saying those words to right so it's just an easier fight for me to fight and you know this one is is special to me like i live in this country as a settler on this land you know and i have to rationalize that every single day when i step outside and i think think about those things and I do think about those things often because for me like I, I've always been like really in touch with nature and with the land in here in Ontario but you know in this country and where we are and I've always just had that spiritual connection and, and have my whole life been trying to understand it and what that means and why and where I am and so on and so forth. So that conversation leads me back to like, yeah, fighting the land back fight, you know, like being here and watching you make a clothing line called De Decolonize. <laughs> I was like, oh, are you crazy? If I bought everything I could find on the site, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and I still go every day to be like, should I just buy more today? You know, I mean, that's, that's sort of who I am. And, and, and what I want to stand for in this world and what I want to spend my time and energy doing, right? That's what I want my legacy. That's what I want my legacy to be. Ultimately, I love making music and being a creative, but, you know, bringing awareness to these things is really important for me because to me, it's all common sense and logic. And once people understand it, then it's just bringing the information I'll do on any level that I can, so. No, 100%, man. And like, you know, I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because, you know, I and the last person that I was speaking with too was Shad and he's such a dope down to earth dude, man. And like Incredible. I grew up also listening to his music. Um, it's just like, you know, that that social socially conscious, you know, it's like we're we're really heading in that direction where we're waking up, man. Our spirits are waking up. A lot of the young people leading the way, a lot of musicians and artists leading the way. Uh, and really getting that connection back to the land and who we are, you know, just as human beings, not as like indigenous people, non-indigenous people, but just as like straight up like human beings and where we're at in this moment and the work that we need to put in to ensure that we can we can stay here for another seven generations and we're not mm -hmm. just going to we're going to be toast, right? So I think that like, this is so essential. We're having these conversations, you know, and being able, and then you, you know, having such a big platform to be able to come on and speak right now is, an, is so big for the movement too, you know, because we need as much people to, to, you know, raise that awareness and really inspire action. That's, you know, what the clothing line is all about. That's what I'm all about with my music. 
um, and, and even, you know, organizing and speaking at rallies. Uh, really, when, when I'm at the rallies, it's like a mass teaching, you know, I have thousands of people that are there that are listening, they're tuned in, you know, and it's all about bringing that truth, speaking that truth, you know, because like we talk about truth and reconciliation, but it's actually truth before reconciliation, you know, and uh, that's how it has to be. So we need to be able to, to put that, those into words, put it into the universe and uh, just continue to work together. You know what I mean? Well, we talk about a lot of stuff, right? We talk about like land acknowledgements at the beginning of conversations, but we're not talking about giving the land back. We're just acknowledging that we stole it, right? Like the shit's crazy. So, I mean, there's a lot that needs to be done to move forward. But for me, I'm just, I'm about anti-harm, you know? That's my mm. thing. I don't like harm. Anyone being harmed, people being harmed. That's why I'm mm. against the, the criminal system and, and the criminal justice system, right? Like I'm against that because it harms people. And, and there's way to address things without harming everyone, you know? And that's, that's where I, at the end of it all, when you pull back the curtain, that's my issue with things. That's yeah. my issue with, you know, say Yemen is on my shirt today, you know? Like there's too many people there being harmed and why are they being harmed, you know? That so I just thought I'd throw that out there because that's that's why I show up to these things right where I feel like injustices are being done and people are being harmed and and why doesn't everybody feel the way I do? Straight up, man. I'm I'm really glad you said that. You know, and and a part of the conversation I wanted to have today too is that you know I've been I've been looking uh, back into some articles and stuff like that on the internet and and feeling really inspired. You know, coming across those. Uh, about you talking about you using music and hip hop to help young people heal and empower them, which is super dope. Like we're pretty much on the same page with that. And then, you know, um, the 40 foundation and wanting to support those youth and under-resourced communities. Do you mind telling us a little bit about that 40 foundation? Sure. So, I mean, it's something I've been working on for quite some time and it's, it's taking some, some turns in its journey, but really at the fundamental of what it is and what I'm about to roll out, it are these cases, right? So I build these all in one road cases, essentially, that are like these mobile studios. And I want to deliver them to community centers, communities that need them, uh, indigenous communities, reserves, places where they don't have access to these sort of things. Um, but they're full blown world class recording studios inside of a box. And the reason why it's so crucial and it's something that I'm passionate about besides the fact that, you know, the music and giving uh, young kids a chance to learn and experience these things and so on and so forth is you can lock them. And so mm. I've been around and doing this long enough in community centers, running studios to know how shit works. Okay. Word, so you, know, yeah, you can word. take this case, lock it, chain it up. And that's it. When you come back tomorrow, it's still going to be there unless they took yeah, the whole water yeah. pipe with them. Right. So it's like the, it's something that's practical for these spaces. And also it's a four by six road case. So you can fold it up and move it into storage. You could fold it up and use oh, it as a bro. table in the cafeteria until it's time for, to use the recording studio. And then you can push it into an open space in whatever center or location you're working at and then use that environment in that moment, right? Because a lot of times you're gonna show up at places oh. and I'll be like, hey, listen, I wanna show up and build a studio for you guys. I wanna put nice. here something for these kids. And they're like, oh, well, we have nowhere to put it. Someone else built a studio and then it broke and nothing works. And now it's just, a, 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 no, we don't want nothing to do with it. And that's honestly a lot of the reaction sometimes. So this dodges a lot of that. And the other part of it is it's, um, I actually just made a video that we're probably going to release soon uh, through the, my Instagram or the, through the 40 Foundation Instagram, where we'll explain a lot more of it and we're just going to start rolling it all out. Uh, unfortunately, I just can't dedicate my life 100% to this in this moment, although I want to. Um, it, it it has locking screws on the front. So you can't even open it up. Thank you can't bro, see dope. where the cables come in and out. It's all concealed and locked. So theoretically, this thing should just never stop working. And I based it off a case that I toured 100 shows around the world with. And when I got back, the case was still in like flawless working yeah, condition. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of like, yo, look, if I can ship this thing around the world for 100 shows and it gets back and still works, like it's good in that community center. It's good yeah, here. It's yeah, good yeah. there. I'm not worried about it, right? right? So, and then I put all the locking screws on. So anyway, fundamentally, it's just a, it's a studio. And ultimately, I, so I'm sorry. There's so much I want to say and have to say. So I have to like yeah. focus my brain on like completing my thoughts uh, efficiently. Um, I want it ultimately to be full of all the content you need to learn mm. how to use the equipment. So inside the case, 
is all on the computer is all the video to all the programs to all the hardware that's there which is really not much it's just your audio interface your keyboard and your computer essentially um but it's all there to learn and then accompanied with the pro the social programming that needs to be in place for a lot of the youth that i'm targeting and want to target and just tools resources to empower these kids and people in general to watch this stuff and learn things like, oh my God, I didn't know, and I can do this and I can do that. And I have this resource at my disposal and this one. And so you have all this sort of like social equity inside the case. You have all like the technological sort of stuff case to learn how to use it. So it's the content as well. So it's a content provider. Now, ultimately the long term is I'm doing things right now with networking inside of my studio that are like pretty mind blowing, right? Like yeah, I'm, yeah. so I basically I'm running studio. I just got uh, I got my IP uh, power switches today off Amazon. So they're like, I mean, sh terrible Amazon, but they're these little plugs that you can turn on and off with the internet, right? So I can like log into the IP and turn the plug on and turn it off. So anyway, I have like racks of gear in other locations that I can like lo remotely turn on and oh, then sure. use all my synthesizers at wow, home man. or here or in other buildings. Like the, the stuff is crazy. So basically with the case, I can connect to it and I can connect to it in like a different way. Now, once the network ability gets to a level, right, and, the, and that's growing exponentially over time, right, when the networking grows and grows and grows. So we're in the next five to 10 years, these will all be even more realities where mm. we'll be able to like literally connect to my studio and go back and forth and share information and help and teach and be involved and so on and so forth. So my plan for the 40 Foundation is a Toronto centric, obviously I'm from this city and yeah, yeah. it's focused around um, you know, targeting kids that are at risk of violence, really. That's a yeah. big problem for me. And gun violence in my city is a real problem yeah. for me. And so I'm trying to, you know, policing is not the answer, right? Programming yeah, yeah. and other things to do for these very highly intelligent minds that are being demonized by our city. That's what's important, right? So I want to be able to connect. So if I have 30 of these cases all over the city, then I can like go through the city and pass through this community center and this community center and show up here and be like, oh, I have the case. Oh, I'm showing up today to tweak it and see the kids, <laughs> what's going on, who's working, this and that, you know? Sick, and then bro. I'm also gonna be connected to these things remotely, right? And then so the, set, the other part of that is going into indigenous communities as well in Northern Ontario and farther in the rest of Canada and so on and so forth that is very close to my heart and really, really important to me. So those are like the two fundamental areas that I wanna, I, I'm trying to target with the foundation. Um, but it's also uh, gonna be ultimately a, a, a donor fund advisory. I wanna help people connect money with grassroots community and programming and putting money in the right places. The other thing is a lot of people are in the community doing incredible work, right? So I'm not here to show up in these places and try and like teach people how to do stuff that they've been doing with community leaders, right? I'm just trying to help get them resources and make them contacts or plug them into other stuff that will help them, right? So it, it's also doing that. That's also a focus for me. I don't need to be at the, the helm of this, right? I want to empower other community programs programs that are already doing incredible work much better than I could possibly imagine to do. So it's multifaceted, but I guess in a nutshell, that's sort of what the foundation is ultimately going to be and look like when I get it where I want it to be. So sick, bro. I mean that. But I have the case. Sorry to cut you off. I have the cases and like that's going to happen soon. And as I said, I'm going to, I'm going to put a video shortly about that and, and develop that a little further. But yeah, that's uh, now I'm done. Sorry. Like, no, 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 bro. Honestly, that's super dope. And it's obviously something you're very passionate about is helping you giving back to the community. You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, that is also something that a lot of people are, uh, you know, they're focused on is like, for me too, is like, we're building this business and we're seeing some, seeing some success with it, but we don't believe in individual success at all. We believe in the power and collective of our people to, you know, dismantle, rebuild, restore things that were there previous because, you know, we've had, we had uh, indigenous economies, you know, we had our own legal systems, we had our own kinship systems. Now they've been replaced with child justice systems and things that don't work, you know? So uh, we, we, we have that to give back. And I feel like, you know, you're obviously on that same wavelength 
And uh, that is harm reduction, especially because music has the power to change the world, man. I truly believe that it's a universal language has the power to heal young people to express themselves, to save my life, you know, to be able to express myself. And I feel like, you know, I could go off and I could talk about something for like 20, 30 minutes or else I could put the same thing in like a three minute song. Boom. It's like, it's mind blowing, man. You know, so I feel like. You know, we're we're on that same same wavelength, uh, and, and using music as a tool and as a vehicle. You know what I mean? Because it has so much power to it. You know, and uh, you have such a big platform, man. So it gives me so much hope uh, and empowers me to know that there's just so much of these things happening behind the scenes. You know, so that we're mm -hmm. able to make this place a better world for all of us. And um, you know, just to circle back on what you were saying, and like even you talking about like land back, bro, like how fucking dope is that? We got like 40 on here talking about land back, you know? And I feel like that's one of the biggest things too is like land restitution because in Canada, we actually only have 0.2% uh, 0 of the land base that we're functioning on, which is very small, man, while Canada enjoys the, the rest. We have more land base here. Dude, than, like, understanding the, the States, treaties so. and shit. People don't yeah. understand that, right? Straight they don't up, realize man. this is unseated. How, how much unseated territory and like where they are, like what's going on, you know? Straight it's, up, man. It's, it's, it's like, crazy, right? Like, so it's like when you start to actually understand that stuff and learn about it, like, holy smoke. And like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know shit. I'm trying to learn as much <laughs> as I can, Dakota. Holy smokes. It's complicated, right? Like I bought some, some, I bought some land recently, right? And so I, a couple hundred acres and like, that's just, it's my piece, right? I spend as much time as I can there, like doing farm shit basically, right? Like yeah, yeah. Just that that's what brings me peace. That's my meditation. And so every time I'm there, you know, I stare at the rocks and the river and I look at it. And I'm like, so, so whose land is this? I own this. Mm. These are my rocks, you know, it says who? You know, what, what territory is this? What treaty is this? You know, who really owns this land? You know, what am I doing with this? Why? Why me? What am I, you know, I have to fathom all of these things, right? And then you wrap around into it, like how Toronto as a city is treating its homeless population right now. Like it's yeah, sick, disgusting. Never mind the, the indigenous people on the street, right? Which is even more sickening and disgusting. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot. Anyway, so I, I try to, like, rationalize all these things and still, like, function along the lines of, like, you know, put put your mask on first if the plane's going down before your children so that, like, you don't, yeah. you don't die trying to save your kids type of thing. But, like, I, yeah. there, you know, there's a threshold to that as well, right? Like, uh, I also, for my own peace and my own happiness and my own future, like, I need to make sure that I'm okay, you know, with looking back on my life and how I lived it and the things I did with my money and, and the impact and so on and so forth. And so if I have a voice or if I'm given a voice, like, you know, these are things I have to go out there and say, right, for my own yeah. sanity. It's selfish, to be honest, just so I, I feel okay about, like, who I am as a person. But, but I haven't figured it all out yet, right? I'm trying to without, like, going down, like, you know, a place of just like being unhappy with the state of the world but i mean welcome to like life right how can you not be unhappy with the state of the world so uh, i'm ba i'm balancing brother i'm balancing but i'm also learning right i'm trying to learn yeah. and teach myself as much as i can right and as i said yeah. like i bought this land and it's like you know whose land did i actually buy right yeah. and what does that even and mean to, to own the land <laughs> and you know the crazy and, and the thing is man like indigenous people don't own the land like nobody that's a crazy concept that you could own the land like we of go course it is land, you know what of i course mean it like, is. It, it's, it's like insane. The, the the concept of it man as long as you respect that land you know you show honor to that land and you take care of it you know that's what it's about in the end and uh indigenous people really Yo, do Cody, you like dj premieres in here oh no way bro are you fucking yeah, serious yeah god bless premiere i love you so much oh, no, I bro. You call. gosh yeah it's it's crazy yo man what the <sighs> fuck, bro what a legend. Think premiere is in here premier prem gosh but oh, listen the, the whole the whole concept of ownership and property and like that's like policing right police don't care about us they care about property i mean that simple concept again something most people haven't wrapped their heads around but when you start to unpack that one and realize all this is about is the ownership of property <laughs> and even that that concept in itself is flawed then you're just you know 
you got to wrap your around like what the heck we're doing here. That being said, did I buy some land? Like, yeah, because this is going to appreciate, like make me more money. Yeah. And do I want to do good things with that money? Yes, because we are all existing in a very capitalist system, right? A yeah. very racist capitalist system. Yeah. Is what, colonial racist capitalist system <laughs> is what we are existing in and living in. Yeah, if we bro. live in this part of the world or pretty much anywhere on the planet at this point. So, I mean, that just is what it is. And and that's what I'm trying to, to ration, right? Yeah. How to how to make the right decisions living in this world, um, because because we do live in it, unfortunately. Yeah. So, so I don't yeah. know what those answers are yet. I'm still looking. I'm still educating myself, and and I guess what I'm trying to do is is bring as much awareness to the causes that I believe that that people I know are doing good things are doing, like yourself, right? Which is why I'm here to put as much attention on this as I can. You know. Thank you so much, bro. Like, honestly, I really appreciate that. And, and like, for me, too, it's just all about the journey, man. I'm um, constantly healing. I'm constantly learning, growing, you know, trying to evolve and trying to elevate my own consciousness and, and be more connected, you know, because there's a lot uh, going on in the world. Colonialism, imperialism is really crushing, bro. It's all across the whole entire world. Like, apparently, um, you know, like, Britain owns, like, 70, 80% of the world's land base. But it's like, how? Like, who? <laughs> like, you're not even around here. Like, but that's just the, the world. That's just the way that it is, you know? But it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the way that it's always going to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I have two, I have two children, bro, and a beautiful fiance and my family that loves and supports me. And that's why I work so hard, you know? And having conversations, missing and murdered indigenous women with a five-year-old girl who's indigenous, my daughter, is a fucking hard, hard conversation to have, no bro. Kidding. But that's why I literally, I dedicate so much time, energy, everything that I've got, you know, to create that better world. So she doesn't live in that it, where we're living at right now. And same with my son, you know, and I just wanted to shout out my fiance, Casey, really quickly. I seen you followed her, bro. Super. Yo, she I actually was gonna designs, say you have a beautiful family, brother. I thank you, man. Bro. She designs most of our gear. Like me and her, we do everything, website, everything. And so like we collaborate, she does like all the stuff that you buy, bro. She designs. So I just want a quick shout out to her. And like oh, another you, thing, bro, so like, primo in here and just like bro mind blown i don't know how many <laughs> hours i spent freestyling to dj premieres beats bro like countless hours man so i'm tripping out bro 40 oh, years still good. Still good. Here talking about decolonization and all this man lamb back like it's a historic moment in, in period in time bro so I'm really honored to be able to bring this conversation, man, you know, and have you. And the justice for, for the indigenous women, too. Like, that's something people don't understand either, right? What's the, is the number 25%? Is that what it is? 25% of, of murders of, of young women were indigenous last year? Well, it's actually, so it's 12 times the national average, right? And okay. indigenous women make up 3%. So the number fluctuates, but, and they're not always accurate, but, but. Every, each year the number raises like but it's astronomical <laughs> like it's just not it's not okay is, you know and when yeah, you look exactly at those numbers good. and realize actually what's going on it's, it's pretty crazy right because we're talking about less than five percent of the population making up a significant amount of that problem that's that's a big deal you know yeah a hundred percent, you know, but the thing is, bro, is also those same women are the ones leading us, you know, into this resurgence of indigenous uh, economics, like literally indigenous women are in the forefront of entrepreneurship, you know, as you can see is my fiance, you know, on the forefront of walking into colonial institutions like, you know, the justice system and literally changing these things from the inside, you know, and walking in two worlds, really, because you have to walk in this, uh, these going back home relearning ceremony our languages all of this literally flows down through the women in our lineage and our bloodlines are passed on that way so they're very strong very empowered very resilient and that's why i'm here bro i was raised by women like my dad i never had a father growing up he 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 uh, wasn't around he passed away and so i was raised by women you know and i have a, a powerful partner who's an indigenous woman so you know it's like polar opposites you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. we have those statistics you know but also on the other side of that there's so much resilience so much rebuilding reclaiming happening right now that it's like it's like i keep saying man it's historic we're like literally at this point in time where we are we have two roads you know it's like this road or this road and most of us are like, neither, bro. We're walking back and we're just picking up and relearning what was left behind because we don't need to make nothing new. It was already there for us. That's for real. That's for real. And I mean, like, even in the space of, like, mindfulness, as people start to understand, like, their own spirituality and, and, and meditation and those things, this, it's the fundamentals, right? It's always been there for us and, and for everybody. And, and that's, 
the irony of the problems we're facing in 2021. I mean, says the guy who's surrounded by like more technology than like mankind. Are you crazy? The stuff I'm do I do in this room is like insanity. Like, holy smokes. <laughs> but I mean, so I mean, you know, that's that's my own uh, that's my own juxtaposition, I guess, of who I am. You know, which is like you know someone who's who's trying to find my own peace in in that place as well as you know being on the forefront cutting edge of science and technology so it's a it's a humble balance i guess somewhere it is man it is you know it's just like it's, it's just a part of the journey man you know and 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 i'm really honored to be a part of this and and to begin this time you know where people are they're waking up man their spirits are waking up you know we're, we're we're ascending man it's it's that time and we're doing it we're using music clothing as vehicles man i see you supporting the indigenous community bro people like jesus okamal clothing you were rocking that in uh drake's last video bro and i was just like yo i know that shit like it was so hype and then and then you made a post about like rocking our justice for indigenous like underneath your jacket and i was just no like, i had it on i had that same i had the shirt on the, your, the hoodie you're wearing and then my jacket just got closed. At first, I had it open, and then it was, it was kind of cold. Oh, it was freezing, bro. and so sick. Even the fact that it was there, man, and you had that intention, you know what I mean? And like the justice for indigenous conversation is so important because, um, like I was saying too, like we have young people, Aisha Hudson. You know, she got shot mm -hmm. to death by police. You know, and that was last year. The cop this year got acquitted. He walked. You know, we have young people like Tina Fontaine. You know, found in found in the river. You know. 14 year old girl and uh and the killer walks free so we're, this is our reality you know this is what we're dealing with but you know when we come together and we and we speak the truth you know and we demand those answers and we turn that into action that's how we make real lasting change and that's what's really happening here today so i just wanted to you know honor those families and the struggles you know right Please. now because they really they carry that pain and they're fighting right now to create those changes uh, within a system that is literally designed to destroy us. Um, yo, but they carry that strength, you know? I'm here with a smile on my face, but like, yo, this stuff is disgusting, right? Like, it's heart-wrenching. Like, it's really disgusting. And like, that's, that's why it's almost like, how? Why yeah. does people not understand? Like I said, how does everybody not feel this way, right? Like, so, I mean, you know, of course, like, thank you for, for bringing attention to the, their families and that, it's it's so tragic and it's um you know my heart goes out to them for real thank you man and you know and like you have to remember even with your music too right like i told you i love that song and yeah, yeah. you know you sent me a song the other day or to, yeah. you sent me a link to it like Our i know the song Florida, already right? like, yeah. i love that record and, yeah and you have to remember what's funny which we don't always realize when we're in the moment right especially as artists and creatives like these things will live forever yeah. These are records in history, you know? When people go back and look, they will find these songs and they will listen to these songs and they'll listen to your words in that song, you know? And you say a lot of very powerful things in that song and they'll listen to those words and that will be entered into the record at some point. So just always remember that too, right? That that's why that stuff is so important and so powerful. And uh, yeah. especially even like when someone's like, oh, I got to make this to get it off my chest or whatever, like, it's it's important it's more than that and you might not realize it you know just like when i'm in here making a beat i don't realize what it's going to be you know and you don't know what that song will be or the impact it'll have in the future and it will have impact i, I guarantee it it's really special so i thought Thank i'd share you, that man. with you as well that that dark city four uh everyone that's tuning in that uh 40 is speaking on the dark city fours uh you know it really inspired the justice for indigenous campaign i wrote it like a couple years back but i kept trying to do the video but the thing is that it was super triggering because like a bunch of my friends are in the video like i had to take the pictures and print them out mm -hmm. and everything and the whole process with it it took a while to, to to try really because when you when somebody passes away you know it hurts but when somebody passes away from indigenous uh, or uh, from injustice, uh, then it hits differently because that person was taken from you. Uh, you know what I mean? And there's no justice in that. So uh, it's a continue. It's a continued fight. Like I lost my uncle in 2016 to the healthcare system negligence. Like he could have got saved, but they just decided to leave him in the hallway instead. And uh, it lights a fire in you. You know? Yeah. Well, like, it's also the oppressor that's like doing it as well right yeah, so that's a whole, is, another man. dynamic to it that's like whoa what are, are you insane like 
<laughs> like my heart yeah, starts man. beating thinking about that fact, right? And there's a lot of other places in the world where that's also the case. So it's, it's, and I can only imagine how, how, how to deal with that. I can't imagine, I should say. Yeah, no, I feel like um, for Canada, they have, and we always say this too, they have a really good PR team, man. Like for the rest of the world, you know, for the longest time, they're like, we treat Indigenous people with the utmost respect. You know, they all got clean water. They're all living good. We got these treaties in place. And then like a lawyer went to United Nations, like, no, bro, th these guys are lying, fam. Like they don't got no clean water. Their houses are falling apart. And Taz is like, oh shit, are you gonna do me like that? And so, you know, that's where a lot of the truth started to begin. They had to apologize in 2008, like, okay, Yes, residential schools, there's a lot of torture and murder and mass graves all over Canada. We are sorry. Generational trauma? Like, Inter what? Yeah, straight up intergenerational trauma. Like, yeah, we are sorry, but like, what can we do? You know what I mean? So it's like, there's lots they can do. But right now, it's more like the power is shifted to back to the people. You know, it's like, what are we going to do as individuals? You know, what are we going to do to ensure that this doesn't continue on? You know, because right now we... And and also on top of that, like Canada continuously gets ranked as like the, the highest quality of life in the world. But, like Ooh. I keep saying, it depends on like who you are and where you live. Because we yeah, have communities bro. with no water. Like their houses are falling <laughs> apart. Like systemically, that's the way that they were built. But they're like, well, most, I guess most of our people are living in good conditions. But it's like, Except it's racist, the people man. That we and like you were saying, land from, like, I guess. Yeah, white supremacy just, man and like what you were saying yes. too before that we're having this conversation and like i watched that live that you had with with uh jagmi and i'm like you know it just goes to show that you know the the, the shift the change is happening is happening now you know it's happening all over the world bro you know the climate strike those young kids that were like doing all the rallies and the young girl that was leading them with greta black lives matter you know all of these really just liberation movements you know looking to to seek freedom looking to be liberated from the constant um oppression it's really just greed and capitalism but at the end of the day you know what we do what we got to do you know to survive because i just i spent i feel like i spent most of my life just surviving man but now like we're thriving a lot of indigenous people right now man we got snotty nose res kids we got dreeses you know we have so many big artists and shout out to them you know that are breaking down doors because you know, visibility and representation is so important for us, you know, so we can see ourselves in these spaces and we're not just like, you know, super underrepresented, but we can see ourselves in these spaces um, and tell our stories. But at the same time, it's really hard to break in the music industry because you have to be like marketable or whatever. And like, how many indigenous people do you see like breaking out into the mainstream, like that will have the hits on the, the Billboard 100 and stuff. There's like, there's none, bro, you know, but we are literally breaking those doors down. We're not asking like, could you open that door, please? Like we're literally fucking kicking it down and, and carving our way for Yo, our own stuff. And it you know will I mean? open, it will open. And that process will work, right? Like you have to look at it from the perspective of like, even if, you know, I, I don't think anybody would have said that a half black, half Jewish kid from Toronto, Canada would be in the position he's in today in the American rap game 10 plus years ago, right? Like people yeah. would, made a really, really big argument about that. And, you know, it happened, right? And I, I, I think it's, it's in the future, you know? But what I'll, what I'll always, what I'll say to that, what I say to a lot of people in this space of music, right? The record will do it. Nothing else matters. The record sure, will do it. The right song will open that door. 100%. It's gonna happen. And when that song happens and that door opens, whew, that's it. Yeah, it's, it's really, man, we, we, we carry a lot. You know, we, we carry a lot. Uh, we do it for our ancestors that literally fought to survive, man. Like we, mm -hmm. they had a plan to kill all of us, you know, like a hundred million people in Turtle Island, which is the States in Canada, there was like over a hundred million. At the turn of the century, bro, in Canada, there's only a hundred thousand indigenous people. A hundred thousand indigenous people, bro. Like we're almost wiped out completely. Now 
uh, we have like over like four or five million, you know, and growing. So there's a real resurgence happening. We carry a lot of that, you know, and so like it's so important when we do these things and we step in these fields of work in the music industry and, you know, doing business with the clothing and acting and everything that we carry that we carry our values, you know, we carry that uh, story, uh, the stories and pain of our ancestors, you know, that trauma. And uh, we, we don't do it for ourselves individually. You know, we do it. A, a collective power means everything. But you know, like I'm, I, I was saying before too, man, like indigenous women are really leading the way on a lot of these forefronts, man. They carry the language and everything. So, uh, you know, we, we, we need to make sure that we're, we're keeping them safe, you know, and, and we have a, a date, a MMIW is May 5th actually. And I seen you were posting about residential school on shirt day uh, down on your feed, which much respect, bro. Thank you for that. There's another day, uh, May 5th uh, is like, national like missing and murdered uh indigenous women day women's day yeah 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 so it's just like wear a red shirt you know put something up there put put it out into the world and and just show some love and support to them as well may 5th may 5th you said yeah yeah may 5th all right it's the red it's the red fit day (sighs) straight up man and yeah just let them know like this is why i'm this is why I'm rocking the red today, you know. I'm showing love and support to all the families, all the, the missing and murdered Indigenous people out there, you know. No, um, it's like, yeah, it's it's crazy, man. I just say, everything I can do, or anything I can do in those spaces is is just extremely important, right? Because any attention I can bring with eyes on me for whatever reason, that that's you know how what cost is that to me, right? Zero, you know. Well, what do I have to pay for that? Nothing. I, all I have to do is, is show up and, and bring some awareness and some attention to something and it can potentially make a difference somewhere to someone's life and reduce harm on some level. And that to me is an achievement, you know? So, you know, I want to do more. And I, as I said, I every day I have to fathom and, or rationalize these things for myself as, you know, how I'm even here and why and, you know, my, my father's of Lebanese descent and, you know, deep down my, my great, great grandmother was from Palestine somewhere. And so, you know, I did my, I did my independent study project in grade seven on the Israeli Palestinian conflict. That was, gosh, I'm 37 now. So I would have been like 13 when I did that. Right. Like these, I've I've explored these, I think, and I think grade eight, I did the, the depletion of the ozone layer. So to show you what kind of kid I was, but like, I think that's where, um my politics have sort of always been and i think about those things a lot and oppressed people a lot around the world and i'm sensitive to that and and here i am standing in one of the biggest colonial oppressions to ever happen in history you know and it's 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 tough so the least i can do is just bring attention and it's specifically to the people that are knowledgeable about it more so than me. I'm not about to pretend that I know about all this shit. All I can tell you is I got common sense and a heart, Dakota. That's all I can tell you, man. You know, like, why doesn't everybody else feel this way? Like, what's going on? It's crazy. Yeah, man. Well, you know, people are starting to, they're starting to wake up here in their hearts as well, man. So, like I said, like, we really appreciate you, you know, supporting our clothing line. You know, we give back as well. So, you know, by purchasing the Justice for Indigenous on our website, decolonialclothing.com, you, uh, we're donating and you support Aisha Hudson's family right now. And then we're yes. going to be supporting another family shortly after that. And um, we have dis- different initiatives attached to our clothing that we support. So, you know, uh, much love for that. And, and taking some time, man, out of your busy ass schedule to hop on here and like, you know, just talk all that, man. Land back, decolonization. Like, you really surprised me, bro. I was like, what is happening here, man? This guy's going (laughs) off, bro. Like, (laughs) this man is waking up and uh, really using uh, using uh, your platform to raise that awareness, you know? And um, yeah, man, I'm just like, I'm still just like really taking this in, bro. We definitely got to stay connected, man. You know, stay in touch. Keep me posted on that foundation. And when the wheels are moving, you know, let me know what I can do to. to no, I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need your help. Well, Trust you know, me, I'm going to be reaching 100%. out for sure. I'm going to need all the help I can get, you know, because I want to go to the right places and do the right things. And I can't do that by myself. So that's good, man. And yo, tell Drake, bro, I said, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I would tell him. I'll show him this video. <laughs> <laughs> Real, bro. I'm like, what? Oh, no, shit. man. This is uh, 
so much love and support to you, Forty, bro. Like I really appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm a, you Thank know, you, I'm gonna just pick like we, we've been going off for like forty minutes right now. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pick one question, bro, because we got, we got tons here right now. But I'm, I'm gonna see if we can find one, one good question here to, to end this off proper. Let me see what we got. Oh my gosh! Oh, um, what up, Mo? Thank you for dropping the gram there, Mo. Appreciate that. Yo, it's, it's is my first live. It's so difficult because, like, you just you you kind of start to watch Debo. You start to watch the comments, and you're just like, "Wait, I'm trying to what yeah, am I thinking about? What, what am I?" <laughs> this is my train of thought. I don't know, man. Why do people gotta write long paragraphs, bro? My glasses, I can't see the shit that they're trying to read. I can't help you with the question parts, my brother. But that, that, that's all on you. People are interested in getting... Okay, if people are interested in getting involved with their causes, how can they contribute or where can they be contacted so people can inquire on how... Honestly, well, on my page, like, through... That's a question for you. Yeah, yeah. They were just asking pretty much, like, how do we get involved in the cause? Like, how do we support? Yeah, you I know, have the same question. Like, on my page, I have like on my Instagram where I'm going live on right now, I'm I'm always updating um, from the community things that are happening, you know, people that are going missing. And it's really just asking the families how to best support them. So then I take that and then I amplify it. And I'm like, yo, there's a GoFundMe right now for like a private investigator y'all can support. Link in my bio or like, you know, the Mi'kmaq are fighting for their indigenous lands uh, and treaties right now. You know, there's a link in my bio, check it out. So basically, um, I'm kind of like always amplifying those. There's also big movements with missing and murder indigenous women. What's so it's in, um, I don't know more as well. I want to try to find uh, people. It's like, yo, where's Drizzy at? <laughs> Not here. Ooh. Okay, best advice as an upcoming producer. It all these questions are so many. <laughs> That's that the one, one you pull for me. I'm gonna pull that one. These ones are like super long and they're so tiny, man. They're like bro, I got glasses. I can't read that. Best advice for an upcoming producer? Gosh, believe in yourself. <laughs> be original and do something different that no one else is doing. That's how you'll find your success. One day, I, one day <laughs> I was driving home. I remember I was on uh, I was on Lansdowne, I think, driving up Lansdowne and. I was making a left at Lansdowne and Dundas in Toronto. I remember exactly what corner I was on. And, and a Jermaine Dupri song comes on the radio on Flow 93.5. And I'm like getting mad. I'm like, it was like Jermaine Dupri and I don't remember who it was. But I'm sitting there. I'm like, yo, I made this beat. Like, I can make this beat. Yeah, yeah. A beat that sounds just like that does. With that clap and with that bounce. And like, I know that beat. I can do that. How come I'm not, how come I can't get on? Man? How come I'm fucking broke still? Like, how do I do this? What's the answer? I've been trying so hard. And until I woke up one day, I was like, oh, it's because somebody, because he does that. Yeah, yeah. Until I realized, like, that's, it's easy to do something that somebody else has already done. No you know, doubt. reverse engineering something is, is, you know, can be challenging, but it's a lot easier than engineering something from scratch. So... Yeah, try engineering something from scratch instead of reverse engineering something that already exists. That's my advice to any upcoming producers. Straight up, man. That's good, man. Stay original, you know, do your thing. Don't give up. Believe in yourself. Like, manifest your shit, man. Go get yourself some rocks and put it yeah, on and like, the universe, and just like right? The pain comes with that too, right? Like, the pain comes with that. Like, the doubt and the pain comes along yeah. with that process, right? Of like, looking in the mirror, like, why, what am I doing wrong? How come yeah. no one cares, right? Like, you, it just doesn't happen overnight. And like, the joke of it all is the material I was making when I was confused as to why no one cared is pretty much the same as the material I make now that everyone cares about. So it's like, it's, it's, it's a funny thing, right? Like, it just goes to show you about life right there. You know, it's not, it's not like one day I woke up and there was like some magic thing, you know, no, it's not how it works. It's just that like your time comes and the timing's right and people understand and you get better. Also, you hone your craft. I'm not saying that didn't happen, but you know, it's just, yeah. you know, it, it's a struggle and that's, that's art though. That's also art. So just, uh, that's a disclaimer for the, for, for new producers as well. Gotta <laughs> know put what in that 10,000 hours, man. Exactly. You know, and like, Yo, DJ Chili, bro. Like, you've been at this for a minute, man. I love questions. I love the question games. 
There's so many. Let me try. Let me try. Pop up another one here. Okay. Someone said, how can the 40 Foundation contribute to harm reduction in the GTA? Like, how can I? Well, I think by engaging with youth is, is, is my goal, right? Like, obviously, the content that we're talking about having loaded into these cases is going to be aimed towards that. So that's what that the folks of that's going to be. But I mean, like giving youth a chance and engaging with them. Yeah. I mean, my yeah. my goal also my programming usually is is sort of and has been the test pilots that we've run, like they've been geared towards younger generations. So sort of like, you know, 14 or 13 to 16, 17, eight, but 18, 19, 20, not so much, right? Like younger kids and giving them a chance to just have good experiences and just do fun shit and get excited and be like, yo, I can't wait to go back and like learn about this or do this. And like, you know what? That might be more important than like going and getting myself fucking killed today or putting myself in a fucked up situation. Right. So it's like, <sighs> and dare I say what I just said, I apologize. That's not the way it works. Right. Like people, no one asked for that. And everyone's in the circumstance that they're in when it comes to the city of Toronto and violence, you know, but I would just say that to, to, to find value in your own life as a young person and to be excited to do things, you'd be surprised at how many of these kids never have that opportunity and having that opportunity will change the outcome for them and how they move forward. And so really that's my goal is just give them and present them an opportunity to do that, you know? Um, and, and just to be someone who's fighting for programming and not for policing, right? Like yeah. that, that, that's also what I'm fighting for here is just to bring more programming to the table and more things to do and, and and not more policing like i want to engage with like highly in, intelligent young kids you know that are at risk of being criminalized essentially and you know once you're all the way criminalized and you've decided to become who you want to become as an adult in this world i mean that's the part of the fight that i don't have the answer to it's a little too deep rooted for me i'm trying to attack or or engage sorry with younger uh audiences to potentially keep them away from making those type of later life decisions i guess is the best way to say it. But again, like, look, I can't answer that question even though I'm trying to, because like, I have to, I have to, you know, uh, divert to my counsel on that, right? Like yeah. my, my friends and family who help me do this stuff do know more about this and have more experience with working with youth than I do. Like in the beginning, I had all these ideas about what it could be and should be. And it's like, you know, as you engage with more people in the community, from the communities, you start to understand and learn like, oh shit, oh, you're right. Oh yeah, that might not work. Okay, yes, good call. I don't want to build a centralized location because I'm not asking all these kids from all problematic neighborhoods to convene in one location where they don't feel safe. I need to bring this experience to each neighborhood so I can engage with the exact kid that doesn't want to leave and come downtown. Yeah. That's the kid yeah. I'm trying to engage with. Right. So I got to go to them. But again, I didn't figure that out. Right. Like my sister and the other people that I work with figured that out and, and help and advise me of these things. Like I need that mm. good counsel. Right. I can't. Anyway, so I'm trying to answer a question. I probably shouldn't be trying and to your, answer. Your sister, she's an educator, right? Yeah. She's a teacher at Central Tech, which That's is a big, open, like, big school here in Toronto. Yeah. And you know what, like you were saying, man, like giving the opportunity for young people, you know, and, and give them something to look forward to. And uh, part of your mission is for under-resourced communities. So like when I first started, uh, I didn't have a microphone or anything. And when I moved to Vancouver, I was like 19, because originally I'm from Saskatoon, right? And I, I was uh, doing music there. And then I moved to Vancouver with like a little suitcase. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try to do it here. But there was a library that had a studio. Like you just had to get a library card and you could go to the studio and record. So like, you know, things like that, giving a little bit of access, you know, and having that drive to take advantage of those opportunities, I think is huge. And like you're saying, you're going to have these all over the place. You're going to be popping up. So to be able to allow young people to tell their story and put that energy somewhere where it matters and somewhere where it can like really help with their personal life and, and express and creativity is a beautiful thing, man. You know, so, so much props for you. Thank you. And back to the foundation, like another thing that I've been learning about as well is like you get into situations with these things where it costs a ridiculous amount of money to do the stuff you want to do, right? You're paying yeah. all these 
things and costs and this and staff and whatever the case is. The next thing you know, you're like, how much money did I just spend on what? Like, how much money went to the kids, man? Like, how much money actually, like, changed anybody's life? Like, what? This is not what was supposed to happen. So what I'm trying to do is... Where it's like, oh, no, I can just, like, de deliver this case somewhere. I'll build the case. Case costs 10K or whatever it costs. Like, all right, yeah, your 10 grand is going to go into this place and hopefully do some crazy shit. Yeah, like, right yeah. away. Not hundreds and hundreds of thousands. Like, 10 grand. You can deliver this case. And, 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 and because of the way I explained it, where you can lock it up and you can push it into a closet when it's not in use, for the most part, you're not, like, screwing over any community center or community resource by delivering a case to them, right? Like, yeah, chain it up yeah. outside if you have to. I don't care. Tarp it up. But you know what I no. mean? Whereas, like, if I were just to be like, you know, Mr. Big Shot, like, oh, I'm going to show up and spend 50 grand building a studio for you and then fuck off and never come back again, right? It's like, what good was that? And then that room doesn't really get purposed or used or this happens or it breaks. And now like they wasted this community space that they could have been using for other things. And yeah, it's yeah, complicated, yeah. right? So, so the point of the, of the cases for me is a tangible way to be like, yo, you know what? Instead of buying this car with all this money I made last week, like let me build 10 more cases and deliver them 10 more places. I'll feel way better about that. And the real truth is I love building studios. Yeah, and yeah, I love passion. building just like random shit. I really yeah, do. Yeah. So like making the cases is just so fun for me. So I just like I just can't wait to just like make more cases and gear and you know make the cables and plug them all in and and like you know figure them out and like the logic of them make them cooler. You know like you know it's it's by the guy I I have a company called Bull Rider, my cannabis company, and uh, Jeff Tech is the grower, and uh, he's. His name, he got his name Jeff Tech because he techs everything. If you give him something, he'll make it better. He'll fix it. He'll add <laughs> some, he'll super glue some component on it that's going to make it unique and do something that the other ones don't do, right? He Jeff Techs things, right? And so anyway, I'm, I, that's, I think of myself the same way where I, I want to make it better. So when I'm building these cases, I'm trying to figure out like other cool shit to like add to them or, you know, what I'm saying, do the studio. It's all a studio is, right? You're just, you're just making it better at all times. The amount of, shit i do in here just to make it better every day i don't even know why i do it i mean it's like it's covid no one's here i'm just doing yeah, it for like my yeah. own personal enjoyment essentially but whatever how long do you think like roughly like you think those cases be like rolled out sometime like this year still or you, you said yeah you i mean like honestly i have one it, sitting right? upstairs i have one sitting upstairs that i'm like i gotta decide who it should go to right now um and then i also oh new limbs in here too wow that's amazing i have to uh I have to get more, I just have to figure out more, a few more logistics of it, right? One of the big ones is like space because they're kind of big, right? They're four by six by oh, yeah, like yeah. four feet. So they're like, you know, they're, they're pretty big. So like one of those open, like takes up a good chunk of space. So if I had like four or five of them, like that's, I would have nowhere to put them. So I, I kind of want to like be okay. building 10 right now. I'm going to roll out the video, roll out the foundation, do all yeah. that stuff. Um, in the, and hopefully in the next couple months, um, obviously I'm juggling uh, other undisclosed projects at the moment. Um, but when I get the opportunity to, I will, I'm going to roll all that out and then do a little more fundraising for it. So I have some assistance because right now I just do it all myself, right? Like it's just yeah, yeah. all uh, I, I, when I can get an opportunity to fundraise for it and then get the budget to rent a space and fill the cases in the space and have me and my guys here at the studio that I work with, like just building them and teching them and, and then so if there ever is a problem with one of the cases, because I do want like 20, 30 of them out there. If there is a problem, they can, we can just, I want to get a van, like the, the case delivery van, you know? So we'll like go pick it up and bring it back to the workshop and work on it. And that's another opportunity to bring more youth from those centers and those places into the workshop to help learn about how to fix it and what you need to do with it and give them opportunity to be interning in sort of my studio system. And that's where I'd like to draw my kids from. Like that I'm that I'm training and interning with here at my studio as well, you know. Like I, those are the type of resources I want to be pulling from. So all of those things need to happen. I need to like pick it up, pick up the pace a little bit, you know. But I, I'm going, I'm going. It's it's, it's going to go down. A couple months, hopefully. Yo. Still, man, we're going to be looking out for that video, bro. And like one day in the future, bro, we got to collab, man. I got to put it out there for sure, Dakota. I'm Which here, brother. We gonna make it happen. Out there, man. Something's gonna happen with it. I'll come to. I'll come take a trip out there. Bless some Yo, when, bro, when all this is like 
done with, I'm definitely coming over to Toronto, bro. Like, <laughs> so much crazy things are happening lately. Like, I'm gonna be out there, bro. You're gonna come out here, and like, we're gonna we're gonna connect, man. We're gonna link up. All right, perfect uh, vibe, you know. Yo, thank you, Dakota. I appreciate it, brother. This was a lot of fun. I'm I'm glad I could just put some eyes on what you're doing over there and and help in any way I can, man. It means a lot. 100% bro and like you know we're gonna stay connected you, you're gonna you know keep us posted a lot of people super interested man want to show some love and support for that 40 foundation and how you're helping those youth uh, people that are just joining in now um, I'm Dakota Bear I'm a hip-hop artist entrepreneur uh, I do community work and organizing uh, so you can find me on Dakota Bear uh, official on Instagram Decolonial Clothing which is how actually I know 40 because he copped a bunch of shit from our store and I was like the whole morning was so crazy. Sent an email. He's like, yeah, I'm 40. And I'm like, well, crazy. So now we're here. Now we're doing a live. It's so dope. It's still like, ooh. Um, so, so much respect. Thank you, everybody, for, for tuning in. Uh, Justice for Indigenous. Check out Dark City 4 on Spotify, YouTube, music video now. Um, yes. Watch out for 40s updates coming for the foundation. And uh, just sending out, like, really Yeah, and our, I see vibes. people putting in the, in, the, uh, in the thing. It's the... Instagram is our 40 foundation is the Instagram handle and Twitter, everything, all the handles across like all social media is our 40 foundation. Our 40 so, foundation. Yeah. So if you guys follow any of that, that's where I'll be putting updates and updating all that stuff there. All right. Let me plug it real quick. Our 40 foundation. All right, everybody. You heard the man. Go check it out. Wait for that uh, that video to drop. Learn more information. We're going to stay connected, bro. I'm sending you a lot of love and support um, from the West Coast. And I uh, just hope you really have a good rest of your day, man. And rest of your Thank week. you, brother. You too, man. Stay safe. Enjoy your day. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And uh, please, man, support everything Dakota's doing over there. It's incredible stuff. Respect, bro. Thank you, All right. man. All right, everyone. We'll chop it up soon again. All right. Peace, peace, peace. peace.